Hey guys, I wanted to share with you some of my essentials. So items that I really need. So outside of paints, paper, and brushes, because obviously I can't paint without those three. But there's other items that I really need and they help me uh, when I'm painting. It just makes my job much easier. So one of those things is this towel. So this is a regular uh, bath towel. It's a smaller size. But the thing is that this towel makes a huge difference. And this is in terms of getting rid of the water from your brush. So the thing is that if I was going to just use this paper towel, it just doesn't make sense to me because uh, the towel, this paper towel, is just going to roof eventually and uh, it just feels weird just to keep using it to get rid of that water from my brush. Instead, as soon as I dip my brush in a jar of water, I just go for this towel and I wipe my brush. And I wipe my brush probably 90% of the time. It's really important to wipe your brush uh, a lot of times before we do certain things because especially when we paint wet on wet, like if we have too much water, then we lose control. And one of those things is to wipe your brush first on a towel. So I do need paper towel anyways. And paper towel, it's usually useful when I need to do it like a quick lift up like I need to lift up or let's say a drop of water land it on my paper so that's when I'm going to grab a paper towel and remove that uh, drop of water or maybe it's paint and the next thing is a lamp so this is up light so I got this actually uh, from Amazon uh, but you can find it at Blick Art Store as well it's a smaller version uh, this brand makes larger lamps as well the thing is that it's that daylight the bright white you need that you don't want to have a yellow lamp so yellow light bulb to reflect on your watercolor paper because the then the colors are not going to look uh, clean so this is what I need so this is not just um, for myself because I'm recording videos and I need to show you the true colors it's also important when you just paint uh, casually and it's your hobby you do want to have that uh, bright white daylight light bulb so that's important it doesn't have to be obviously this one or this brand it's the light bulb that makes the difference another thing is my palette and I do get a lot of questions about my plastic palettes so this one is uh, by Richson it's just plastic I know it looks like it's porcelain especially on the videos because it's so shiny right it's just plastic and the cost is about four dollars I think it's four dollars maybe it increased to five I can't remember the thing is that it's cheaper to buy it from uh, dickblake.com than Amazon on Amazon um, unfortunately it's like a double a price so they doubled the price so I would go to like Dick Blick or just put in Google search uh, Richson plastic palette and this one has 16 wells so I prefer this palette over any other ones out there because it's really soft it has like these soft edges here it's really easy to clean it and I don't really use the smaller ones mostly those larger ones just because I really need uh, larger spaces to mix the colors but the size of these wells is just what works for me, right? And here's an example of a different plastic palette. So this one actually doesn't really have a name. I don't even know what this is. But as you see, this one has like uh, harder edges and I don't like it because it's not that easy to clean the paint out of these. Another thing is washi tape. And washi tape obviously is totally optional. I just like to use washi tape to create either a white frame on my painting. So I would say like here over here on this painting or just to hold my paper down. So the thing is that this is actually in the block, so I don't have an issue, and this is the block. This is actually Hannah Mule Collection Series uh, watercolor paper, 140 pounds. And the thing is that once the painting is done, then how do you remove this paper without damaging uh, the block or, or, the, or this sheet actually? So I use this palette knife, so this is by Holbein, and it's actually kind of like I bent it already, but the thing is that this is how I remove that sheet once I am done painting. So I just go like this, 
and then it's kind of like a knife, like a butter knife almost. So this way I don't damage my watercolor paper. So this main one that I just painted on. And also it's safe uh, for the other papers, the sheets that are still left in there. So that's the palette knife that I am using. Now that one piece that I really need, actually the most, is a glass top table. And the thing is that this table, it's much cheaper on Amazon than on Dick Blick. Sometimes the prices are cheaper actually on Dick Blick, but in this case, a lot of different brands recreated this table and uh, they sell for half the price on Amazon. So I'll show you the image of it. The thing is that um, you can raise this part of the table if you are doing like some regular drawings or you're painting with acrylics, for example. So the thing is that I'm painting with watercolors, so I prefer my paper to stay flat. And so I keep this part of the table flat, but I do have the ability to raise it up. So for a long time, I was just using regular cheap uh, pencils and that's totally fine. But then my sister, she's a designer actually, uh, which is why probably she's like, you need to stop using those cheap pencils and just invest in something. And the thing is that they don't cost that much. You can buy a good pencil under $10. And this is Rotring. I also use some other brands, but uh, it does make a difference when I sketch. So it's really useful to have these. And then just a regular um, eraser is fine. Although this one I bought from eBay and it came from Japan. So it's nice because it's refillable. So a part of my towel, a lamp, washi tape, palette knife, plastic palette, uh, my pencil to draw and then eraser. What do I do after I'm done with my paintings? I put them inside these cello bags. So these cello bags are really good. And I actually put a lot of the paintings inside one bag. But the thing is that you can separate your paintings and just put one in uh, each bag separately. And these really protect my paintings. And of course you can use varnish over your painting as well. But what works for me are these cello bags. And I also got these from Amazon. And whenever you buy these, they come like in the bulk, like 100 pieces. It will last you for a long time. So these are the cello bags and they come in different sizes. I think this one is 13 by 19 inches. So this is actually a jar after uh, a yogurt. So I had some yogurt and then I decided to use this one for my water and that's the other ones as well. This is how I keep my paints. I have this plastic container and I just put all the colors that I use the most right in here. These are not all the colors, just because I don't use all of the colors by Holbein. Uh, some are more like essential, but uh, this is how I can keep them close by. So right next to me. And then he'll probably ask about this stash of palettes. So these are actually the same palettes as this one here that I was sharing earlier. Plastic palette by Richson. The thing is that I don't like to waste the paint. So once like it becomes too messy, like over here, I wait till I'm through all of them and there's probably like 12 of them all together. And then I will wash off just this part, the dirty part, so the mixed up parts. And then I will leave those islands of colors so I don't waste the paint and I just keep reusing it. So this is the most economical way for me uh, to save on paint basically. So that's it guys. I hope this helped you a bit and gave you some ideas Something that might help you actually uh, with painting in, your, in the painting process and such as this towel. I think this is actually number one, the most important item here on my table. Well, outside of the table, I guess itself, because this table, like the top is glass and this is what makes the process of painting much easier for me. So thank you guys.